Lord God, the Father, just lift up this time to you, Lord God. May we be right in the eyes of God. Because, Lord God, we put our eyes upon Jesus. Lord God, we're all sinners. All have sinned come short of the glory of God. Lord God, I ask you to put my sins under the blood now as we open to your word, Lord, and glorify Jesus Christ. For Jesus' sake we pray. Amen. Amen. Okay, John chapter 1. And we're at verse 13. Which were born not of the blood, nor the will of the flesh, nor the will of, of man, but of God. Amen. Now we're going to look at of God. We looked at the will of man. That was very short. <laughs> will of man, I want to sin. Will of man, I want my own God. We looked at the uh, how man wants religion. Man doesn't want God's ways. So of God, and that would be prophecy of God. God has already set forth everything that is going to be and has and will be done. Isaiah 7.14. Now, we're talking about Jesus Christ. Why he came. Isaiah 7.14. Man could never think of a virgin birth. That's beyond the scope of man. Because in order to have a baby, you need the marriage bed. And man loves the marriage bed. So when we look at the coming of Jesus Christ by the will of man, imagine what man would want from Jesus. That's not what God has given. So Isaiah 7, 14. Now here's of God. Therefore the Lord himself God himself shall give you a sign. Jews require a sign. 1 Corinthians 1, 11, I think that is. Behold, a virgin, that's a woman who has never had any relations with any man, mm -hmm. shall conceive. Impossible. Now, you will, okay, bring up the medical science today. Test two. You still need a male. To conceive. Shall conceive. And bear a son. Well, you got a 50-50 chance. Out of Massachusetts, you got 152 times. I don't know how many sections they got today. But, it's but in the Bible, there's a male and female. So, already in the realm of prophecy, let's look at a virgin shall conceive. Well, let's look at a virgin, okay? It's a 50-50. You got a woman who's had relations with a man. Or you had a woman who has no relations with a man. There's no other. That's 50-50. Shall conceive. A virgin shall conceive. Impossible. Forget the 50-50 of a virgin or 50-50 of, I don't know what you call a, woman, a married woman. A wife. Because that's what, you know, you're supposed to have the sexual relations. But when God said conceive, that threw the odds out. No gambler that does it as a profession, legal or not, is going to take those odds. Those odds would be like at the horse race, doggy Fido is going to run the race. There's no dogs that run at a horse race. I'm not going to put my money on the dog. God says, conceive. Now let's look at more. And bear a son. Well, we know there's a male or female. That's it. Okay. Otherwise, you're sick in the head. You need a doctor. You need to stop listening to doctors. Mm -hmm. need to get in the Bible. So that's 50-50 again. You get a son or you get a daughter. And call his name Emmanuel, which means God is with us. You know how many names there are in the book, uh, books in the Bible alone? The Old Testament. Before Mary conceives. You know we're talking about Mary. You know how many names there are in there? And God says, out of those names, I'm going to call you a name that's not in the Bible, Emmanuel. When they named John the Baptist, they're like, oh, wait a minute, why are you calling him John? There's no one in your family named John. They named him Zach Zacharias, whatever his father's name is, I forget. I can never remember John's dad's name. Zacharias. They're like, who, who in your family is John? Well, he was already pre-named. So look at, look at, look at, look at, look at the odds. 
I don't know much about odds, so I can't speak anymore. But this is odds that a gambler would not take. Though there are 50-50 chances, all right? 25 cents will flip a, a, a coin in the air, call it heads or tails. It's 50-50. So look, at, look at the possibilities here. Now we move. Let's move further to Isaiah 9. Yeah, but when you combine it with the virgin... It's impossible. The name and the son, it, it's impossible. The <laughs> yeah, it's more and more and more. go crazy. But the fact is that a virgin will concede, that's it. That, that's out of bounds. Mm. That's, that, that, there is no odds for that. Like I said, the dog running the horse track. It's impossible. Isaiah 9, 6. And there, there are 48 prophecies, I am told, of the first advent of Jesus Christ, and they've all been fulfilled. And I'm told that the, the odds of that stretches as far as the unknown elements of all the elements of the atom. When God, when God, the Bible of prophecy, he sticks, he sticks his neck out where it cannot be by chance. You go to a woman at a fair, and she's got this little tent, and you walk in there, she's got her tarot card or a crystal ball or whatever she's got. A famous person is going to die this year. Duh. Duh. Someone in your family will be married. But, yeah. but if she can say the name of the person. But when Jesus said, out. but when God says in Bethlehem of a virgin, going to be a son. The world is going to be upon his shoulders. He's going to be hated and despised and rejected of men. He's going to be bruised. He's going to have his beard pulled. Now a man's either going to have a beard or he's not going to have a beard. His garment is going to be... It would just go on and on and on. It's going to be like the Passover lamb. You know how many details of the Passover lamb? Not a bone shall then shall be broken. He's going to go into hell. Phew wee. Isaiah 9, 6. You want a verse for, for a Jehovah Witness? That's Here it is. Right there. Right I got it on a bumper sticker coming. For unto us a child is born. That is the humanity of Jesus. Humans are born. That's the 100% Jesus is man. Breaking this verse down. Unto us a son is given, that's Jehovah. God can't be born. There's 100% man, 100% God in that, book, in that verse. And the government shall be upon his shoulder. Really? The police department, how may I help you? There's a guy over here preaching Jesus. Can you shut him up? Can you get him out of here? <laughs> Officers, have that man preaching Jesus arrested. Throughout church history, I'm not just talking about me, like we talked about earlier. He shall, uh, and his name shall be called Wonderful. He's wonderful to me, capital W. Those are capital W. That's the name of Jesus, Wonderful. Oh, Wonderful! No, there's nothing wonderful than more than Wonderful with Jesus Christ. Counselor, capital C. You got troubles and problems in your life? Go to the counselor. You ready? This Jehovah Witness. Who was born? Who was given? Jesus. The mighty capital G God. God was, now watch this, God was born and God was given. A man was born and a man was given. And yet, a man was born, Jesus to humanity, and God was given. Uh, yeah, God was given, but God wasn't born. You want to try those odds? How do you have someone born that wasn't born but given? Imagine. It'd be like, here's a woman. She's in the hospital. She's just giving birth to a baby. All right? The baby's been born unto her. And then she you know, here they come. They will come walking in the, in the hospital room again. There she is in the bed. Here's another child. It's not yours. But here's another child. You get another one. You buy, you give birth to one, get one free. <laughs> That's not, that's not what I'm talking about. It's not get, get birth one free. It's the same child. The same child is born. The same child is given. 
Try that. You see, this could not be the will of man. Man can't think this up. And yet it happened around 0 AD, uh, something, 4 BC. Wherever the time frame that Jesus was born, he was given by God and he was born. So when they say Mary gave birth to God, impossible. God was given to her. She gave birth to the humanity of Jesus, not gave birth to God, according to chapter 9, verse 6. Mm -hmm. So Mary is not the mother of God. God gave himself using her. Mary is the mother of Jesus. You say, what's the difference? Can't get into that. Can't explain it. That's the Trinity. And this is where the Jehovah Witnesses will go off on their wild goose change with a rifle with no bullets. Well, it says also in the Bible that in her was formed a thing which Jesus, God, would enter into. He, he was still talking to people and, and, and working with his father up until the time that he was born as a person. So what we look at here now is the mighty God. That's what it comes down to. Now, we got another problem. The everlasting Father. And this is a problem, again, that, relig that religions have, not just Jehovah's Witnesses. He's God and He's the Father. And people will go off in the, in the Gospels, well, didn't He pray to the Father? Yeah, in the humanity side. But He's God manifested in the flesh. The flesh is the Son. And the Prince of Peace. And imagine a Catholic Church calling themselves the Prince of Peace. We, mm -hmm. we were by one that would have a carnival every year that drove us crazy. Mm -hmm. So, now let's look at the odds of this one. Again, a child's born, but a son's given. That's kind of hard. And the government would be upon his shoulders. Well, the government's upon many shoulders. But when I was born, no one prophesied that the police department would be called on me because if my family would ever say, if I were called to say hi, I'm in jail, I would think my family would have 100,000 things I could be in jail for, not for being a Christian. And that goes for any Christian. And the thing on Facebook, you saw me in the back of a police car, what do you think I did? Yeah. And, all right. His name shall be called Wonderful. Have you ever met anybody called Wonderful? <laughs> There's a lot of weird names out there. I've never met Wonderful. Now they'll say, Mr. Wonderful, Mrs. Wonderful. Yeah. You pious, prideful person. How about Counselor? How about Dr. Counselor, Counselor of Law? <laughs> no. I don't know about that one. And then the Mighty God. There he is. Those threw the odds right out the window. Because this child that is born and that is given, that is a son, to be Emmanuel of a virgin that conceived, is to be God. That's it. You're done. There's only one that can do that. Mm -hmm. And when I talked to the Jehovah's Witness, I said, do you say, I made sure that, that Jesus is sinless. I made sure he acknowledged it. He said, yeah. Your church, whatever you believe, churches that Jesus is sinless. Yeah. Mm -hmm. For sure, Jesus is sinless. I made him. Without denial. He goes, yeah, and then how, how can he not be God? There's no sinless people born. Paul had sin. My, my brother, I was told, was hours old when he died. He was a sinner, died as a sinner. Now, no sin would be imputed to him because he doesn't have no knowledge of sin. But he died as a sinner hours old. We're born into sin. That's why we have the virgin birth because Jesus is not born into sin. He's given by God, born of a man, but given by God. So Isaiah 53, you want to know about, remind yourself of Isaiah 53, because this is all about the sufferings of Christ. This is an important chapter. Yeah, I, need a, I need a tab on Isaiah 53 right here. Oh, yeah. And if you're going to deal with a Jew, Jewish person, Hebrew, they will say Isaiah 53 is them. And the ones that persecute them is the Gentiles. And we're not going to go through that, but you can lay out, if they'll listen, they won't. 
verse by verse lay out, it's a man, it's Jesus. Because it's all singular. Uh, we'll look at it. Isaiah 53, verse 3. He. Well, if you deal with the Jewish person, it says he, not they. The T and the Y is missing. He, for he shall, oh no, he, he is despised and rejected of men. How's that for prophecy? How are we doing on prophecy today? You want to lay your money down on the table? That this happened by chance or by the will of God? A man of sorrows. And yet the Bible only records that he cried twice. Jesus wept at the tomb of Lazarus and then he wept over Jerusalem. It's amazing. Jesus had sorrows because of man. And acquainted with grief. Well, that's all of us, isn't it? Then Christ suffered as we all suffered. We all have sorrows. He had sorrows. We all have grief. We, he had grief. We're despised, rejected by some men. So was he. Take it to Jesus. He cares. He knows. He understands. And we esteemed him not. We. <laughs> know that. We didn't care. Every time Jesus spoke about the, the death, burial, and resurrection, well, who's it going to be the greatest? Yeah. Lord, they said that this, you know, Elijah was going to come. Surely he has borne our griefs. He's taken our griefs with his having griefs himself. How many people will listen to you? Free. Let me add that. You may say, well, I go to the site. No, listens to you and takes your grief for free. We'll give you all time to listen to you. Anytime. And carried our sorrows. How about that one? There are some sorrows that your friend, your spouse, your family members can't get, deal with, with you. Because they never afflicted. They never had those problems. I've never had a child die. I cannot explain to a, a person who has a child die. I've had a wife die. I will go to people who had a spouse die, and I, I will try to help them and comfort it because I've been there. And I give them the warnings. I've had cancer. And Tracy's had cancer. Married two people. Mm. Two babies. I know about so, But I can't say nothing. Now, I can say, I can be a witness on cancer on the other side of the hospital bed. I can do that. I can counsel you as, a, as somebody who's been at the side of a hospital bed, but not in the hospital bed for cancer. But here is someone that will, look what he does for you. Yet we did extreme him stricken. How about that? How about when you give it all to Jesus, then you know what? Oh, well, I'm going to go on with my sinful nature. I'm going to go on and do what I want to do. And yet he'll listen to you and he'll pick up. Smitten of God. Well, how's that one? And many people will say, God, why did God do this? Why did... Jesus can literally say, God did it to me. Wasn't, isn't he? Wasn't he? Wait a minute. Well, this, you're blowing my mind. Isn't he God? Well, Jehovah Witnesses say no. Okay, well, then... But God smitten God by who, what I believe that Jesus is God. God smitten himself for us. The man that was born and the God that was given was smitten by God. God was walking and talking on this earth while God was in, the, was in heaven. Go find me a professional gambler. Have him please sit down at this table, then we'll have him take the odds. He won't. He'll probably get up and take off and leave. Now remember when we're looking at John chapter 1, this is not the will of man. This cannot be man. We're looking at God manifesting the flesh. We're looking at the light. We're looking at the creator. Remember all we went through with the light, the creator, everything that Jesus has done, all the studies. Everything that we've done as a study. The new birth that we studied. Everything about Jesus Christ. Now we're looking at the impossibility of no will of man has could and bring Jesus Christ 
to be for us today. There's no way you can say a religion. People are saying, they told me, well, what's the difference between your religion and mine? Mine's real, mine's alive, mine's the way, mine's the truth, mine's the light, mine's the bread, mine's the meat, mine's everything. What's yours? By the way, what's the religion? Do you know satisfaction? Do you know for sure where you're going to go when you die? These things have I written unto you that you may know you have eternal life. That's the difference. And they'll go mumbling off, yelling, the angry, screaming, trying to... Ron told me the other day he was dealing with some people and they picked up a stone to throw it at him. We're getting, we're getting persecuted time. And he told me he didn't want to be persecuted. Well, guess what? We're going there. So, where are we now? We're, Isaiah 53. Okay, still read. Still read. Verse 5. But he was wounded. Alright, have you ever been wounded? For our transgression. Now, there's been times I've taken a hit because of somebody else. Or somebody's taken a hit because of me. You know, accident. You ever been on a sports field? You get back in the head by the basketball or whatever. You get, I've been whammed with a bat one time. Almost knocked it Ooh. unconscious. But that's by accident. I've been hit purposely. But have you, or has anybody, ever said because of that sin laid on me? Has anybody ever told you, you know, you've done something worthy of jail, but hey, you stay here, I'll go to jail for you. How's that? How's that for prophecy? Even though I don't think a mother's love would even go that far. Now we got a, a, a great chick, uh, gospel track about a mother that took the death penalty for her son. But that's, that's what I'm saying. Taking your place. He was bruised for our iniquity. The chastisement of our peace was upon him. You got peace, you got surety in the Lord. Look at the suffering, look at the anguish, look at the beatings, look at the brutality that Christ suffered for us that we may have the peace. You want to find that in any human? You want to say that that is not God manifested in the flesh? I can't describe how they did it. The Bible says that his back was torn up like a man plowing a field. I, if I can say this right, they beat the crap, they beat the hell out of Jesus. And then he went into hell. They said they couldn't recognize him. There was no recognition, there's no beauty in this chapter that we desire him. This is of God. With his stripes, that's, that's the cat of nine tails upon his back, we are healed. Wait a minute. Jesus, let's look at any man. We're looking at odds here. Any man is going to take a whip. How's that going to heal you? Imagine going to doctor's office. Doctor says you got this disease. Okay, what do I do about it? Nurse, step in here. Bam! Backs him. Backs him. Right in the back. Mm. How do you feel? I still got the disease. But with his stripes, I'm healed. That is impossibility. That'd be like me taking someone else's pain medicine and saying, how do you feel? It didn't work. Duh. The prescription of my healing is for God to beat the daylights out of Jesus with that cat of nine tails. What? That don't make sense, God. That's not the will of man. We're not done. All we, like sheep, have gone astray. Mm -hmm. Have you ever stepped away from the Lord? Have you ever gone away? Only yes. one disciple was at that cross with Jesus, John. He had 12 of them. Where was the multitude? What was it, 4,000 men he fed, just men alone? We get to ask that all the time. Where's your crowds? And then he fed 5,000. Mm -hmm. Where were all those people? I've had many people get on my, get on my bandwagon, they call it, and uh, where are they? They're gone. The life of a Christian, as far as the, the will of man, it's lonely. It's harsh. 
And the Lord, here's the answer to us going astray. And the Lord, lay, ha, and the Lord had laid on him the iniquity of us all. Goodbye, Jesus. See you, Jesus. Had it with you, Jesus. Father said, because of that, their iniquity is on you. You know how many people have gotten saved and left the Lord? The Lord's still, hey, you come back, come on. I'll take you. That prodigal son. You know, it said the father waited for him. The son didn't see the father on the return. It was the father that saw the son. He's on that front porch or something, waiting, looking out that window somewhere where he can look down that road and say, my son's going to come. What if you never get right? What if you be bad as a Christian and you live a wicked life? Then the Lord's going to look for you in the clouds. They're coming. He didn't come down that pathway of wickedness, but he's coming through the clouds. And they heard they come to me. He was oppressed. And he was afflicted. Yet he opened not his mouth. I'm sorry, two weeks ago I was oppressed and I was afflicted and I called my lawyer. I had to, but I called the lawyer. Christ did not call no lawyer. He did not call no initials. But we're blessed that we were able to call yeah. a Christian lawyer, not a worldly lawyer. That's, That's right. true, yeah. We went to the brethren like the, like the Bible tells you. Yeah, yeah. I know. So... He didn't open his mouth. He didn't say, oh, I'm, and you know what? Jesus had all right to say, I'm innocent. I didn't do it. When I, my first night, when I preached it, I was allowed to do the message at the prison. My first night, I was going to go in there all excellent, wonderful, and great. And I had this great illustration. I was going to talk about pardon. I forget what the kind, but I was going to say right now, I said, everybody in this room who did not do it, raise your hand. I did not expect every single hand went up. I expect only one of you. People in jail don't believe they did it. And some of them, some of them have been proved by a court of law, not once, twice, maybe three times, that they were guilty. But Jesus had all right before Pilate to say, hey, I'm innocent. And you know what the weird thing about that whole situation is? Pilate said, I find no fault in him. I find no fault in him. I find no fault in him. And he still went to the cross. And his studio accusation was king of the Jews. He died on that cross uncondemned. Barabbas didn't say one word at all. He went home. He was oppressed, afflicted. He opened out his mouth. He is brought as a lamb to the slaughter. The lamb. That's the lamb. Of, that's the Passover lamb. That was slaughtered. That lamb never asked her, what are you doing? Not me, take someone else. That Passover lamb had nothing to say. And yet it was afflicted. It was beaten. It was killed. And his blood was shed. How are we doing? Isaiah 11, 1. Of God. This is of God. I'm already out of the realm of betting and wages. We've already seen by the first verse of chapter 7, verse 14, it's impossible. Isaiah 11, 1. Here's another one. Try this. All right. Abraham, Isaac, Jacob. Okay. Of how many people ever it been? Babylonian, Greeks, uh, I can't even name all the nations. One nation, Abraham, Isaac, Jacob. Jacob had 12 sons and one daughter. I'm not going to name it. And there shall come forth a rod out of the stem of Jesse. Ooh, we even went down further. We go Abraham, Isaac, Jacob, Judah, and then go to the, the Ruth chapter 4 and you'll find the names of David's family to a man named Jesse who have a son named David. Boy, God really limited the family one on that one. You know what God said first of all there? The impossibility. 
of all the nations of the world, I'm going to choose a Jew. Now, according to world history, the Jews should have been wiped out a long time ago because there are no Babylonians today. Egyptians are not really Egyptians. Not the Egyptians of the Bible. There are names of groups of people in the Bible. They're gone. They're passed out. Tyre. The Tyrites, or whatever they call themselves, are gone. But a family that has lasted since Abraham, that are still to be today, God says of Abraham, Isaac, Jacob, and then Judah, our 12 sons and one daughter, Family, 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 book of Chronicles. He'll give you the list. Matthew 1 and Luke chapter 3. He'll give you the list of all the names of Jesse to David. God names down one man of an entire world population, Abraham. And then God chooses a son of Abraham where Abraham and Sarah were old age, a hundred years old, unable to produce any children. They had to have a miracle child. And then Isaac gets married to Rebekah, and she is barren. And he has to entreat the Lord. And then they have two boys, Esau and Jacob. And Esau sells his birthright for pottage. And then there's Jacob. Jacob deceives his dad, deceives Esau, gets the birthright. Esau is angry enough to kill Jacob. God had to prevent that. Jacob goes off in another land. This is just the family we're looking at right now, the rod of Jesse. Jacob goes off in a foreign land, gets mistreated by his father-in-law. Has four wives. He goes to his one city and his daughter's raped. His sons do bad. His firstborn sleeps with one of his wives. He's a surplanter. He's just moving all around, causing all kinds of trouble. His sons hate him because he loves his other son. And he gives birth to Judah. And they sell Joseph, blah, blah, blah. And we pick up Judah is, meets with this woman, has his son. This son dies. This son dies. This one is left off to the thing. The, the woman that was supposed to marry his younger son, she dresses herself up as a harlot and goes on to, into uh, Judah. She has twins, and they're battling out in the womb. <laughs> Just the story enough to get to Jesse's like, how did it happen? David? You know how many times Saul won him dead? He sent the whole army of Israel to go find this one man. And one particular place in the Bible, I was thinking they'd be coming around the mountain when they come. They're chasing each other around the mountain. And then Jonathan comes up, hi David, how you doing? Jonathan could always find him wherever he was. But Saul couldn't. Because God prevented it. All right, David gets on the throne. And, and Gabriel tells Mary, that throne to David is your son. Abs Absalom asserts authority. Abijah tries to serve Solomon's authority. <laughs> and then he has a son rape one of, one of his granddaughters. His daughter. Mm -hmm. Daughter. And this is the family of Jesse, the David. How are we doing on odds? How are we doing? And aren't they, isn't he even related to Rahab? Rahab, yeah. Uh, yeah, because she's in Father Matthew. Uh, Isaiah 40. Isaiah 40. We're looking at the prophecies. This is all, and this is only a partial list. You can Google the prophecies of Jesus Christ, the first advent. And don't forget, we got the second advent. If all the prophecies of the first advent happen, I guarantee that all the second advent prophecies are going to happen. And one of them, what is one of them prophecies? The rapture. Uh, Isaiah 40, verse 3. The voice of him that crieth in the wilderness, Prepare ye the way of the Lord, make straight in the desert a highway for our God. 
Every valley shall be exalted, every mountain and hill shall be made low, and the, cra- and the crooked shall be made straight, and the rough, pl- the rough place is plain. And the glory of the Lord shall be revealed, and all flesh shall see it together. For the mouth of the Lord has spoken. He said, what's that have to do with Jesus? That's John the Baptist. Even John the Baptist and his ministry and the people of Israel are going to come to him and he's going to proclaim that that's the Messiah, that's the Lamb of God who take away the sin of the world, which we'll get one day. That was prophesied. We haven't come up to the baptism of Jesus yet, but hopefully we will before the Lord comes. That's what we just, that's what we just talked about. That day that Jesus shows up to John the Baptist, there it is. When John the Baptist is preaching, there it is, Isaiah 40. Mm -hmm. You want another quinky dinky? How about this? Ready? How many books are in the Old Testament? 39. What's what's the first number of the the New Testament? 40. Matthew. What chapter are we in? 40. 40. The 40th book of the Bible talks about the man, John the Baptist, showing up. How's that for a quinky dinky? Now, I'm not going to say that the chapters and verse markings are inspired, but I'm going to tell you they come close. You want to have some fun? Go through your Bible. Check out 1611. Chapter, six, chapter 16, verse 11. Chap, check out 1313. That's another good one. 1818. Check them out. Check them out. They're interesting. Zechariah 9.9. My Bible wants to go the other way. <laughs> Zechariah 9 9. Towards the end of the Old Testament. Mm-hmm. And we're looking at the way of God. Of God. The prophecy. I'm saying we, we couldn't do all 48. This is, this is the will of God against the will of man. The will of man, the natural man, would be like, I'm going to meet this woman in the bar and, and shack up with her. But look what how God's laid out. There's going to be this woman, a pure woman, right woman, and then take it from there. Zechariah 9 9. Now, we're not going to talk about the birth now in the younger years of Jesus. How about the older years? Rejoice greatly, O daughter of Zion. That's Israel. That's the city of David. Shout, O daughter of Jerusalem. Behold, thy king, capital K. Match that to what Pilate wrote above his head. King of kings. I'm not, not right. Take that back. The king of the Jews. And then match what Revelation 19 says. The king of kings. The king cometh unto thee. Isn't that kind of prophecy what he wrote upon the sign above Jesus' head, the king? That's missed by most people. All right, but that's not the prophecy. Well, that's the prophecy. That's not the prophecy. I mean, Pilate could have wrote anything. The king cometh unto thee. He is just. All right. So he had to be right. And he was never condemned by Pilate. I find no fault in him. I find no fault in him. Having salvation, who gives saves? Jesus saves. That's his name. Jehovah saves. Ooh, now we're getting to his name, getting to what he is. Lowly. And that means he's, he's innocent. He's not prideful. He's not boasting. He just walks in. Riding upon an ass and upon a colt, the foal of the ass. Well, that's interesting. Where have you read that? You read that in the Gospels. That's when Jesus gets on the ass and they throw palms in front of him and they celebrate today, you know, Palm Sunday. But they don't celebrate that he was, seven days later, he's going to crucify him, crucify him. That great crowd that's welcoming him coming into Jerusalem is going to want him dead. In about seven days. Great people. That's Isaiah 53. Jeremiah 23, 5. Jeremiah 23, 5.
Wind biting. Jeremiah 23, verse number 5. Okay, now we've already looked at the seed of the, the, the rod of Jesse. We just looked at his triumphal entry. We've just looked at him being a king. Jeremiah 23, 5. Let's look, put it all together. Behold, the days come. Saith the Lord, that I will raise up David, that's up Jesse, a righteous branch, capital B, that's Jesus, and a king, capital K, and shall reign and prosper, and shall execute judgment and justice in the earth. Look at the first and second advents in that one. That verse is not even finished yet. He was of David, Matthew 1, Luke chapter 3. He will be king, though again, over the head of Jesus by Pilate, king of the Jews. And yet he's going to reign in the millennium. So here's a verse talking about the first and second advent. And no mention of the church age. Church age is what, is what they call a valley of two mountains of prophecy. The mountain of the first advent and the mountain of the second advent. And you can't see the valley because you're on the mountain. Jeremiah 31, 15. Jeremiah 31, 15. And this would be, what we're going to read now is found in Matthew 2, 17 and 18. Uh, Jeremiah is going to say Isaiah. Jeremiah is going to set forth something that's going to be said. Uh, approximately 600 years later. Earlier. 600 years in the future, where what we're reading out about that, I don't know about dates. This is what's going to be said in 600 years. Thus saith the Lord, a voice was heard in Ramah, lamentation and bitter weeping. Rahel, weeping for her children, refused to be comforted for her children because they were not. And what's that? That's when Herod goes out and kills all the children trying to kill Jesus when the wise men showed up at about two years old. The prophecy that Jesus would be on the run, and not in great detail, but he would be on the run that they want him dead, and that a bunch of children are going to be killed where, where Rachel is, there it is. And this verse is quoted in Matthew, it's in Matthew 2, 17 and 18. If the Lord tarries, if I were to say that my great, 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 great grandchild is going to walk up to the President of the United States and say, Hi, good afternoon. I have no chances even knowing that would be the same. I would have no chance. I could go to the buffet right now and say, Oh, I'm going to have my favorite mushroom. And go to the buffet, maybe they won't have the mushroom. But do you see what God said here? It said, thus saith the Lord. And it's going to be quoted in the New Testament, the Gospel. We're looking at of God. How wonderful God knows. And Matthew one twenty three. Matthew one twenty three. Let's look at Matthew 1.23, that on the summary, on the summary, we're going to sum up what we've done so far. Matthew 1, 
23. This is where we started. Behold, a virgin shall be with child, and shall bring forth a son. Impossible. And then 50-50% chance, son or female. The world would want, remember it said of the will of man, you know what a man would want today? He would want a girl. Mm -hmm. You know how I know that? Did Pharaoh in Exodus says save all the girls alive? That's not what the world, the world would not want a son. And they shall call his name Emmanuel, which means God, it was be interpreted, God with us. Came on his own, his own received them not. Genesis 3.15. Going back to Genesis? Oh yeah. Can't escape Genesis. Genesis 3.15. In light of what we've learned so far, mm -hmm. God is great. Yes, he is. Now, let me, while you turn to Genesis 3.15, let me ask you a question. Of the will of man, what man could do this? No Sodramas couldn't do it. Gene Dixon couldn't do it. I pop my head every once in a while when we do go to the, the flea market, that woman at the booth, I'll pop my head and say, did you know I'm coming? <laughs> And usually she, there's somebody sitting there and so it's good. Do you know how it's coming? Last time she got mad at me. Oh. Does a psychic pay for life insurance or do they wait to the final time? Why don't they play the lottery? And I've had one tell me, well, because we don't use our powers and stuff like that. I said, if you were to play the lottery and win, I forget what it was back then. I said, you win the 14 million, whatever the lottery was back then. Mm -hmm. He goes, yeah, well, I couldn't do it with my power. Think about what good you could have done with that money with your powers. Hmm. I mean, if I had that capability, if I had the power to be a healer, and I don't, I mean, I'm in the ministry. If God gave me that, that power of healing, I'd go right over to, the, to both hospitals here in Daytona. And they'd probably kick me out. <laughs> Look what Jesus did. He healed them and then they put him in the cross. But if I had that power, I'd be going to where people are sick. I wouldn't need a tent. I wouldn't need a tent. I'd go where, it, where I could use it. And I shall, and I will put enmity between thee and the woman. That's far stretches out, Eve. And between thy seed, the serpents, and her seed, the woman, and it shall bruise thy head, and thou shalt bruise his heel. There is the virgin birth right there prophesied. The first prophecy ever is Genesis 3.15. There is coming a seed of the woman, not man. A woman don't have seed. She has an egg. And what a great time of Easter for that, Esther. You lay eggs around on the grass, and you send your little sperm children to go find the egg. That's sexual. But this woman says she has a seed. That is that virgin birth we've been looking at. A son shall be born. I mean, excuse me. A child shall be born, and a son shall be given, the Son of God. And he's going to bruise the heel of Satan. And it can't be that serpent right there. How can you say the serpent? Well, he's talking about the serpent. Let's look at verse 14. And God said unto the serpent, Because thou hast done this, thou art cursed above all cattle, above every, above every beast of the field, and thou, in thy belly shalt thou go, and thus shalt thou eat. He has lost his legs. He has no more heel. So you can't say the serpent. You ever see a serpent? He ain't got no legs. It can't be his heels, and if he did, it'd be heels. Mm -hmm. Whatever that serpent looked like, he lost his legs. Mm -hmm. Genesis 12, 1. Genesis 12, 1. 12 is the number of Jewish. Genesis 12, about a Jewish family. 
of all the nations of people. I don't know how many nations there are today. But there's Israel, there's German, there's I I Italian, there's English, there's American, there's Mexican, there's all kinds. Well, I've already said, there's no Babylonians. How come the Jew has lasted all these years? I mean, wouldn't you think that Adolf Hitler, he had that zeal to kill them all? If they weren't protected, he would have had a good job? Have not Russia tried to exterminate all the Jews? Everybody tries to, to get rid of, to kill one nation, one group of people called the Jews, and they're still here. And God says of that family that everybody hates, my son. Genesis 12, 1. Now the Lord has said to Abram, Get thee out of thy country. He's in the Ur of Chaldee. And from thy kindred, get away from your family. And from thy father's house, get your closer family. Unto a land that I will show thee. That will be the Palestine. I will make of thee a great nation. And will bless thee and make thy name great. And thou shalt be a blessing. I will, bless thee, I will bless them that bless thee and curse them that curse thee. In all the families of the earth shall all the families of the earth shall all the families of the earth be blessed. There's Jesus Christ. Who's Titus 2.13 say he is? He's the blessed hope. Amen. God just told Abraham you're going to have Jesus Christ in your family. Uh, this one says approximately 920 B.C. So, oh, over th many years. Because he's my blessed hope today, 2019. Double the centuries over, and he's my blessed hope. And anybody that believes on him, alive or dead. They're, they're asleep in the Lord. He's the greater blessed hope. They're with him. That man, one man there, that's the rod of Jesse. That's the rod of Jesse. Genesis 18.18. Uh-oh. Uh-oh, 18.18. 18.18. Hmm. Now, this is a good 18.18. 18. I mean, when I told you 16.11 uh, and 18.18, I mean, deception to the rule. I mean, there are, the only one perfect one is Jesus Christ and God. That's why I said the chapter and verse markers are not inspired, but they're close. Seeing that Abraham, God changed his name. Ishmael was born during Abraham. Abraham. Isaac was born during Abraham. Seeing that Abraham, Abraham shall surely become a great and mighty nation. We just read that. And all the nations of the earth shall be blessed in him. Abraham, not, not Abram, Abraham, Isaac, Jacob, Judah, Ju uh, 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 let's see, like Perez, and then maybe we'll look at that in a moment. Yeah, we'll do that extra. But last place in Genesis 22, 13? 22, 13? See my pen stock or my rotten writing? Genesis twenty two thirteen. Eighteen. Twenty two eighteen. That's an eight. Mm, yeah. Alright. Look at verse eight for the context. Abraham said, My son God will provide himself. A lamb for a burnt offering. Abraham just said, Son, God's going to give himself. How's that for a prophecy? You know how many animals there are in the world? What did John the Baptist say? Uh, uh, behold the lamb of God. There it is. Now look at verse 18. And in thy seed, now Isaac's there. Genesis 3. And in thy seed all the nations of the earth shall be blessed, because thou hast obeyed my voice. What blessings can the Germans give you? How about the Indians? 
or Native Americans or mm. Japanese. I mean, they give me some good electronics. But the Bible says there's only one blessed hope. That blessed hope goes back to Abraham. Oh, boy. Let's go to Matthew 1. Matthew 1. Maybe to Luke, but Matthew 1. This is extra. Matthew 1. I don't know how we're going to do this. But Matthew 1, 1. I don't want to mean skin free, but we don't need to go through all these names, but what? In the book of the generations of Jesus Christ, this is about Jesus. The son of David, that's David, I mean, that's Jesse. We read that? The son of Abraham. Abraham begat Isaac, Isaac begat Jacob, Jacob begat Judas, that's Judah, and his brethren. And Judas begat Pharaoh, and Zaar of, of Tamar. And Pharaoh begat Isham, Isham begat Amram, Amram begat Imbinadad, Imbinadad begat Nashan, Nashan begat Solomon, Solomon begat Boaz, and we're in the book of Ruth, of Rakkab. Boaz begat Obed of Ruth, Obed begat Jesse, Jesse begat David, and you go into all the kings. Now let me ask you, can you trace your genealogy? And don't go spitting into tubes because... I have seen many people now, they say they go, they send in two tubes with the same spit and they get two different answers. And by the way, when you do that, you're supporting the Mormon church because that's what they do for a living. And the Bible says as far as genealogy, I mean, it could be interesting, but don't go, I mean, find out who you is, but don't go full blast. But there it is. You know, okay, let, let, let's close now. As far as Jesus Christ of God, John chapter 1. John chapter 1, verse 13. We'll read the verse in a couple of comments and we're done. Which were born not of blood, nor the will of flesh, nor the will of man, but of God. All right, let's try about God. One family of all families, Abraham. There's going to be a, a son given. Uh... Something given, the son gave, I forgot what was born, something born. Right? Of Abraham. How's that? That's going to be of a virgin. Okay. That. But it's going to be a son, not of, not a female. And not only of Abraham, it's going to be of Jesse, which is going to be David. Look how he narrowed that down. And then he's going to have a man come proclaim him as the Passover lamb of God that takes away the sin of the world. How about that one? Of all the animals. I mean, the, the, the church of Satan has a serpent. Okay? The, the golden calves. That's the wrong one. Aaron danced around the calf. Up in Israel, they had the golden... That's the wrong animal. 48 prophecies of God, and they all came to be. And some of those 48 prophecies, we saw one verse already in Jeremiah. It also contains the second advent. There are verses that have been fulfilled in the Bible, Jesus' first coming, and yet there's part of that verse that has not been fulfilled yet by his second coming. Now, how do I know my religion? No, it's not real. You know, I know that's correct because it's of God. No one else can do what God just did in our study today. No way. If you do your fairy tale, you're doing drugs. And that don't get you saved. And Lord God, I thank you it's of God. Because Lord God, if it's of man, it's a sinner. And all have sinned. It's nothing I could do, it's nothing I could say, Lord, but by the Holy Scripture. And by you, God, Jesus Christ, Thank you, Lord God, for the blessed hope. For Jesus' sake, we pray. Amen.